Today my guest is Cassidy Whipple. Cassidy is from Ledyard and has a practice that she's involved with in East Lyme Niantic, right on 161 uh, Flanders Road. And she has a tax practice. Cassidy Whipple, welcome to the show. I'm so Thank glad you. you can be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we have so much to talk about. Cassidy, you began your practice uh, just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It's right next to the Village Cafe, right next to State Farm. We all know where that is. And yes. there's a bird bee place. That's Birds Unlimited. Birds store. Unlimited <laughs> is right on it. We pass by it all the time. So if you want to have some good tax advice, Cassidy's your person to go to. Yes. And Cassidy, how'd you get started with taxes? You don't look like somebody that would be, you know, to me, taxes are a little bit boring. What, death and taxes, is the inevitable, right? A little trite, but so true, So, right? um, accounting is, I guess, a lot like puzzles. I love puzzles. Mm. You get all the pieces to somebody's, basically, their financial life, and you put it together, and um, so I kind of fell in love with it in high school. I used to help my mother-in-law, who has her own tax practice, and used to work with her, and then I ended up taking a couple classes in high school. I found out I was good at it. And then I um, went from there, went to college, got my CPA license, and here we are. So that's really interesting that you say taxes and is like a puzzle and it tells a story. And you find out who the people are, what their priorities are for how they spend money, how they sponsor different uh, in initiatives or incentives, things that are going on in people's lives. So um, taxes and rising inflation, how do those two fit together? So. I mean, I've never heard of the tax rates going down. <laughs> they, they go up with inflation as everything, costs of goods go up, your taxes go up. It just seems to be the how the world works these days. Um, but it's as inflation goes up, usually minimum wage goes up. People's wages go up, salaries go up. So it's every, it, that's how it all usually works. So how do we mitigate that? How do we how do we make it so it's better for us? You know, if taxes are going up and our salaries, you know, a lot of people live on minimum wage. Mm -hmm. How do we make it so we can make it so we can have a comfortable life? What is the secret for all of that? So there's not really a secret. <laughs> um, I mean, the the government has written the tax law for us. A lot of people think that the tax law is against us, but if you actually look at it, the government does write a lot of incentives into the tax law. Um, like, for example, the child tax credit. The government's not just giving you a credit for having kids because they're being, they want to be nice. Um, if you look at our population is decreasing, or it's at a rate right now that it will decrease over time. So something that the government pretty much gave us an incentive, if you have more children, you get more tax credits. So for each kid, you get a $3,000 tax credit, and that's like one way the government writes the law to get to their end goal by giving you an incentive to have children, so um, like that's, well, that's just one example. Well, yeah, and I'm sure, there, I'm sure there's a lot of other examples yeah. like that. So the idea, basically, what I'm taking away from what you're saying is know the taxes, know what's going on, mm -hmm. because if you know the deductibles and things that you can write off, yes. right, is yep. the expression, if you can write off, then you know what you can do or not do, and it really helps you to live a more affordable life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a lot of people who come to me, their first question is, how can I decrease my taxes? Um, so I always like to look at their, everyone's situation is also different. Of course. No one's the same. Um, so we like to take a look at their, their jobs, if they're contributing to retirement, because there's benefits if you contribute to retirement, um, how many children they have, are their children planning to go to college? Um, there's a lot of different things you can do to plan for the future, depending on your situation and scenario. So, um, it's it's different on a person by person basis, but but is, but some people call it wealth management too. Mm -hmm. So it's managing your money, but managing your money smartly. What do you think about people? What advice do you give to people who say, "Oh, I'll just do my own taxes." It's so expensive to go to a tax consultant or advisor yep. like you, right? Yep. So, I mean, maybe not. I don't know how costly you might be, but different people can be quite expensive. But mm -hmm. what do you say to people who do it themselves? So. You can do it yourself. Of course, um, right? But I mean, you might be missing something. You're, you're, you miss things. I mean, it's very common. I One thing I also do is I always look at everyone's prior year tax return. And there are things that I'll, I'll say, these are some things that you should have taken advantage of that you just didn't know. Right. Um, like there's energy credits and things like that that you can take advantage of that if you're using TurboTax, for example, it just TurboTax doesn't know to ask you. Mm -hmm. So you miss things. And then it's, do you want to invest it's where do you want to invest your money? Do you want to take your your own time to try to figure out your tax return 
and the hour, two hours it's going to take you to do it, or do you want to invest your time in something that you're actually going to be good at, like your job, and pay somebody else to do your taxes so you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You use your time to do what you're good at and then pay somebody else to do what they're good at to get the most benefit. Right. I mean, we don't cut our own hair, right? <laughs> right. So, you know, we we rely on somebody who has gone to beauty school and yeah. has a health license to cut hair, so mm -hmm. we rely on them to do that. And the same for you. This yeah. is this is your wheelhouse. This mm -hmm. is what you love. This is what you do every single day. So now Warren Buffett has an interesting quote, something to the effect that he has paid what was it? More? Like he pays more on average than the average American. Do you believe in taxes. that, or what do you think about that? And everybody knows Warren Buffett. Yeah, yeah. he's one of the richest guys in the world, right? Yeah. So well, I do think there's a little bit of a misnomer that people assume billionaires don't pay anything in taxes. Um, I mean, they know they hire teams of attorneys and CPAs to not manipulate their money, but they know where to put their money to get the best tax outcome. But there's also other tax types than just income tax. People don't think about the property tax on these giant warehouses that people, these billionaires own, or the tax on the fleet of vehicles and trucks that are going out, the road tax that a lot of states are implementing now, and payroll tax that they pay on all of their employees' salaries, their Social Security, Medicare, federal and state unemployment tax. So they might be paying less in income tax, but they're paying all these other taxes that most people, like an individual who gets a W-2, they don't they don't think about those things. They're paying their property tax on their house, their one, two vehicles, um, but they're not thinking about like business people who have one to two, three warehouse buildings, a fleet of trucks, hundreds of employees. There's all, a lot of other different types of taxes that a lot of these big business owners pay that you and I wouldn't pay. So it's, I think there's a little bit of a misnomer there when people think, oh, all these billionaires aren't paying anything in taxes. Um, it might not be their income tax because they know how to invest their money back into their business to keep their income relatively low. Um, so all those people, all those attorneys that they hire, is that a tax write-off for them as yeah. well? Yep, yep. You can write off the fee for your attorneys. Um, also, if you own a small business and you hire me to do your taxes, um, there's part of my fee you can also write off because it's I do your business tax also, so it's a business expense. Um, Interesting. So, what are what are the benefits of having a small business? What what do we what are the takeaways from that? How can we encourage more entrepreneurs like you to go out and do that sort of thing? Because that really is the mm -hmm. American dream, right? Yeah. That, yeah. So, people who get a W, it's not bad to be an employee, but if you're an employee, you don't get many write-offs. Right. You get your W two. You can write off some charity, maybe your real estate tax and um, mortgage interest if you get above that high standard deduction, but business owners can take more advantage of write-offs because they are producing their income, and then but there's costs to produce their income. Um, so there's a lot of different write-offs, like when you're driving your car to go see clients, you get to write off a portion of your, your mileage. Um, if you have an office in your house, you can write off your home office deduction. A lot of people nowadays are working from home, but if you're an employee and you have a home office, there's no deduction for that. If you own your own business and have a home office, there is a deduction for that. So there's a lot of different, a lot more wiggle room and things you can do to write off against your income if you're self-employed versus if you just receive your W-2. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's just the standard deductions you can take and then that's, that's that. I heard somebody one time say that if you can work for your work, work for yourself, you can work with anybody. Is that true? What do you think about that? <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. Because I mean, you tend to be your own worst critic. So right, right. It's it's hard working for yourself. It's not easy. You have nothing to fall back on. You're, mm. If you're working a nine to five, you get your weekly paycheck. It's a combination every of week. uh, yeah responsibility yeah, and, and when credit. You work for yourself, it's it's all on you. If you're not working, you're not making money. So. Exactly, exactly. So, what's the relationship between cash and taxes? Like a lot of businesses, just want like cash only, mm -hmm. or you know, no credit card, like no uh, uh, blueprint. Probably, how does that work? So, this is very common in like restaurants, beauty salons, mm -hmm. um, handyman contractors. Mm -hmm. I mean it's easier to hide cash, so mm -hmm. people do it. And also, these credit card companies, there's a very large fee for credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, they usually range from 5 to 7% on every time someone swipes their credit card, you're getting charged as a business, so somebody can get their 
cash back points with their credit card. Sure. Um, which is, everyone likes their cash back, but don't think about who's actually paying the cash back. It's the businesses who are paying the credit card fees every time you swipe your credit card. So there is a preference for receiving cash and checks just because there's less of a cost. Um, and then people like to try to not report their cash, but then you also fall into the trap of if you're getting significant cash payments and not reporting it, and then down the road you need financing for something, the bank's gonna say, well, you don't have any income, and mm. you can't say, I've been, I have all this cash, but it was never reported, because mm. then, mm. then you're gonna catch 22. It's, mm. Mm. So it's an easy trap to fall into, but then there's also the downsides too. And then if you ever got audited, you're, you're taking your chance there as well. So, the, but the IRS really doesn't have a system for tracking all of those cash payments and cash receipts. Right and now they don't, but if, if for example, you got audited, they, they ask the questions. Mm, they, mm. They'll look at your personal bank statements also, and if they see that you bought a Mercedes for cash, but your business is consistently showing losses each year, they're gonna say, where did that money come exactly. from? Exactly. Um, and then if you have, you're showing invoices, with no payment, then they're like, oh, are all these just Something written fishy. off invoices? Right, it's right. fishy, yeah. yeah. So they go through. Um, there's ways to catch it, but I'm not gonna, I wouldn't be surprised if they did get a better system. I mean, everything's going electronic now, so it's easier and easier to track everything. Mm, mm, okay. And less people are paying with cash. No one has cash anymore. Um, like, I mean, I never have cash on me either, so. <laughs> well, Venmo is the other yeah, thing, or right? Venmo. People are yep. people are just doing it, yeah. So do people put money overseas? Is that a myth or does that really happen? I, mean, I don't have any clients who have money overseas. Um, I mean, there's, people do it. And what's the benefit of that? What's the story behind that? People think that you're gonna be able to hide money. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't, I don't like taking that risk. Um, it's a risk you take, essentially, but as far as the clients that I've seen, I mean, there's not, I don't see it go on very often, but okay. I mean, I'm sure it does. Um, I have a friend who actually, she's an auditor in the Cayman Islands, and so she says that she sees it, like people have bank accounts in the Cayman Islands, and it's, it's more tracked than you think it is, um, Yeah. but just kind of a story more than it's, it really is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it happens. I'm sure people know how to get away with it, but. So are there tax in incentives for entrepreneurs? You know, if you want to open your own business, how do we get started with that? Like, how how do we, like, you, of course you have your business plan and all that. Mm -hmm. Would you be the person who we would go to to maybe like help me like set up, like what would be a good organization as far mm -hmm. as the money and all that's concerned? Yeah, um, I see it a lot. I have a lot of people who come to me and say, I've either started a small business recently or I'm looking to, how do I do it? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a matter of sitting down, making sure there's a good business plan in place. I wouldn't open a business without having a business plan because then you're kind of just going willy-nilly and you don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sitting down, figuring out if you need financing, where you're gonna need to how to get that financing, where it's gonna come from. Um, do you wanna do a private loan, a commercial business loan? Do you have a friend, who, a lot of people have friends or parents who wanna loan money to them? Mm -hmm. And setting that up properly to make sure that they're getting a lot of, you should pay interest on loans, even if they are private loans, which mm. interest is deductible. So you can write that off as an expense. Oh, while, good to know, um, right? Yeah. While your family's benefiting from investing in you. Mm -hmm. um, or you can go, the Small Business Association has small business loans for um, startups and small businesses, especially women-owned businesses, uh, minority-owned businesses. There's always like grants and tax incentives um, for those types of individuals looking to start a business. But yeah, having a good financial advisor or a tax planner um, on your team is huge. You're starting, you're starting off better than most people because you have somebody who's gonna keep you accountable. Exactly. And tell you, all of the things you can be doing to best increase your income while also getting the best out of the tax law to reduce your income any way you can. Because um, for small business owners, there are, so as an employee, you have your Social Security and Medicare mm -hmm. that's withheld on your paycheck, mm -hmm. and your employer pays half of it. Mm -hmm. So you pay half, your employer pays half. Right. As a self-employed individual, you pay both halves. Oh boy. So it can be expensive to be a small business just starting out. 
because you're it's 15.3 percent of mm. your self-employed earnings that is taxed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So being able to know, have a plan for what your tax might be at the end of the year um, based on whatever projections you think you're going to make is also huge because a lot of people will get to the end of the year and say, oh my god, I didn't know there was this self-employment tax on this income and then they're scrambling to come up with the money to pay their tax bill. Mm. So if you're going into it by yourself blind, it's, you, it's easy to get caught in those traps where if you have a tax planner or financial advisor, you're at least aware, so you can plan for it. Um. So when we talk about uh, like small businesses and, and um, like LLC, what's the difference between an LLC? Or are, are you an LLC? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what does yeah. that stand for? Uh, limited liability company. So the way, like a, a straight sole proprietorship is you're running your business under your social security number. Okay. If you're an LLC, you set up it's more for legal purposes. Um, if somebody sues you and you're doing business under your social security number, they can come after all of your personal assets. Mm. If you set up an LLC and somebody sues you, they only can come after your business assets. Mm. So it creates a level of separation. Okay. Um, it's just it's like legal protection. Sure, I um, get it. So then, and how do you set up an LLC? You there's a bunch of different ways. Okay. Um, you have to register with the Secretary of State, um, get a federal tax identification number. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you just pay a filing fee with the Secretary of State. Usually, um, I can help somebody do it. Attorneys, it's a very common practice for attorneys to help people do it. You can do it by yourself. Um, but it's not but complicated and it's not onerous is what you're saying, Yeah, it's, basically. it's doable. Okay. It's very, you can do it in a day. Okay. It's, it's not too cumbersome of a task. Okay, but okay. And are you involved with any nonprofits or mm -hmm. non for profit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm actually a, on a board of a nonprofit. Oh, which um, one? Child Evangelism Fellowship. Uh, we do after school activities for um, in schools for like it's kind of like a Bible club for kids in elementary school. And where is that located? Um, we're located. Our headquarters are in Basra. Um, we're in a lot of the Norwich schools, Lebanon schools, um, North Stonington schools. And, um, but yeah, I'm the treasurer of, on that board. So, of course, yeah. everyone would want you to be following that money and knowing. Yep. Yeah, yep. And yeah. then I have a, quite a few nonprofit clients as well, uh, ranging from farms to ministries to people who raise money for veterans and um, all sorts of things. So, okay. Yes, I, I, to answer your question, long, it's a long way, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, no, absolutely. No, I, I'm glad to hear that. And then you said that you're doing a biking adventure coming up in yeah. the near future. Tell me about that. Um, so in September, me and a couple of friends, we are doing the Tour de Force Memorial Bike Ride um, to raise money for um, police officers and veterans who lost their lives in the line of duty. Um, so we're starting it up, mm, where is it, the Valley of New York? Hudson Valley. Hudson Valley. Yep. So, and you said 400 miles. Yeah, almost 400. Wow. Yeah. And it's over four days, and then we're ending at Ground Zero, where the Twin Towers were. Mm, so. Mm. so people who lost their lives or were impaired in the line of duty, mm -hmm. and that could be a lot of different stories, lots of yeah. scenarios. And are there any that you can kind of encapsulate for us to tell and share? So I don't know anybody personally, but my friend who asked me to do the bike ride with her, um, her father was a state trooper, so mm. she's very connected with uh, a course. lot of the local police officers. Um, it's her passion, so I decided to do it with her. Um, it's to support the families who mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. who lost their fathers and mothers who um, in line of duty, essentially. Okay, okay. So, but she didn't. She didn't lose no, anybody. No, nope. her luckily dad is. she was fortunate enough that her father is still with us. Um, okay, okay. And. So are you training for this? What yeah. Is your, yeah. Yeah, we train actually this morning. I went out. We do an easy ride on Thursdays, and then Sunday we do 30, 40, 50 mile bike rides to okay. just get used to sitting on the seat for that long. Yeah, it's a long time, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get so you can hardly, you're, um, it's hard to stand up immediately, right? You have to yep. make sure you stretch and yep. foam roll and all that good stuff mm -hmm. that goes with fitness and training. Yeah, I biked around the boroughs of uh, New York City one year, so that was like a big fun thing yeah. for me to do but so you're really involved with a lot of the local issues is there anything that you think that people absolutely need to know should share that you should share like pearls of wisdom that you've learned along the way you're I know you're young you're not even 30 yet right <laughs> yeah. so uh, what what 
what, how can we be forewarned? Forewarned is forearmed. How can we know what to look for and how to be judicious with our money and our spendings and careful? Um, so I think it's really important to, uh, it's, a lot of people just look at this year when they're doing their taxes. I think mm. it's important to look into the future. Are you saving? Are you planning? How do you have your assets are your assets being held in a trust? Are they just in IRA accounts or pension accounts? Um, a lot of people don't think about when they pass away in the future, what's going to happen to their money. Mm. Um, do you have a will in place to, because um, I mean, if your money goes into probate, that's a long, hard, tenuous task that you're leaving all of your um, surviving family members to deal with. So right. I think doing tax planning for your future and making sure your assets are held securely so creditors can't get at them when you pass away um, is a really smart thing to be doing. Even I'm, I would consider myself very young and I, I think about it. I mean, I'm not going to retire for another 40, 50 years, but it's something that it's going to happen eventually. So planning yeah. for it now is... So how much should people save, even if you're young, like, you know, young babysitters, you know, I don't know, when I started babysitting, I got 35 cents an hour. <laughs> so somebody who's, old, who's babysitting now might get five, ten dollars an hour. It's not mm -hmm. even minimum wage. So should they save some of that money that they're getting in? I mean, it doesn't hurt if, if you put, everyone always looks hindsight. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, if I would have put $100 in my retirement account, it could have been $3,000 this year. So don't, don't let that happen to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. if you can put a little bit away, just even with inflation, it's gonna go up in value. So if you can put some away, it, it never hurts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can max out your Roth and traditional IRAs. I think the limits, it might be going up to 7,000 for 2023, but it might be 6,500 still. Um, but if you, if you can put away the maximum, do it's, it. it's an easy thing to do. And mm -hmm. if you do a self-guided IRA, it's, there's no cost to you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt. So make sure you save. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a financial plan. Make sure you have a will. What else? <laughs> um, let's see. Something. Well, I mean, all this younger generation, we, um, we're very internet-based. Mm. If you have a business that's established and you don't have an online presence, you're going to be beat out by the other businesses who might not be as good as you so that have an online presence. Well, some people just say, oh, I, I do word of mouth. We're, yes. We're, but right? That's, what do you say about not, that? <laughs> it used to be that's how you got business. Right. Um, you'd ask your friends and family, oh, who do you use for, I don't know, a mechanic? And they would tell you their family mechanic. But now, my generation, we go on Google, we Google mechanics, see the one with the most reviews, mm. read some of the reviews and choose mm. that one. Mm. I, I don't ask my dad, like, who's mm. your mechanic? I'm mm. going to mm. go on Google. So, What does your dad think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. So, yeah, and I go on next door and I'll say, you know, somebody's like on next door and they'll be rating all these people mm -hmm. and, and then I'll do the Google review on the ones that are most strongly indicated as yeah. the best resources and yeah. the best, yeah. Yeah, so I think having an online presence is huge for mm. businesses these days. Um, you have to have a Google page. Do you have a Facebook account? I mean, do you have a social media account? It's a lot of work to have all these different outlets of getting your name out there, but mm -hmm. I mean, kids are on their phones all day, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you have a social media presence, it's going to be seen by somebody. Well, that's really interesting too, which brings me to my probably final point, but the idea that some people put stuff on social media that I think shouldn't be there, <laughs> right? On their Facebook page, perhaps they'll be, I don't know, indicating some kind of inappropriate, my opinion, inappropriate kinds of things. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Like, be careful with your profile, yeah, right? And be careful with your reputation. Employers look at your, your social media. If you don't think they do, they do, 100%. They'll mm -hmm. find your, your Finsta, your Insta, what, all the things. What's Finsta? It's like your hidden fake Instagram that people tend to post more risque things to. Oh, really? Um, and then, like, employers find it. It's, okay. And then they're going to hire the person that's not as flamboyant who looks more professional. perhaps or yeah looks yeah. more professional yeah. that's i also one thing me and my husband joke about all the time is you see all these tiktokers who tell every the whole world how they're making all of their money mm. and it's like why are you telling the world how you're making your money everyone else is going to just copy you and then you're not going to have your 
your niche outlet. Um, so be impeccable with your money. words, be impeccable with your reputation, yeah. be careful. Mm -hmm. There's people who maybe aren't looking for your best interest, yeah. and there's a lot of competition is what I hear you saying. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does your husband do? He's a contractor, so he grinds and polishes concrete floors. Oh, cool. Um, so like if you go into like Dollar General, Walmart, it's concrete floor, but it's shiny. That's what he does. <laughs> All right. Well, thank him for that because it does make a difference and it's beautiful. So Cassidy, you've been an amazing guest. I think I'm a little bit smarter. I think everybody who watches is going to be a lot smarter and able to understand. And you're available for a consult or for mm -hmm. hire and you're Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy Whipple CPA. If you Google me, I come up on Google. Okay. Um, my website is C Whipple Tax. Um, and then you can email me also cwhippletax at yahoo.com or give me a call. Okay, and uh, good luck on your ride. Thank you. 400 miles, <laughs> amazing. And if we wanted to donate for that, how do we do that? So there's a website that is linked actually on my website. Um, so you can do it that way or you can find me on Venmo. Donate now. Yep. Okay, <laughs> very good. Thank you so much, Cassidy. Thank You've you. been lovely. Yep, thanks for having me.